All right, the streak is broken today. Today was a little bit of a down day in the market. Not a big down day. In fact, um, looking at the Dow, well, it was down 9.15. I mean, that's a lot for most most times, but now it's a moderate down day. Uh, looks like they signed that big stimulus package, and to quote Ron Burgundy, well, the opposite of that, not very impressed. But um, So anyway, long story short, if you look at the stocks today, this is basically stocks that I currently own. I think all of them are down today with some exceptions. We have MFA, which is my new recent favorite, and Groupon, which is the red-headed stepchild. Um, Zovio, which is an old company I used to work for, I always keep an eye out on them. Uh, LYV, what is that? Oh, that's Live Nation, is up like negligible, it doesn't even count. Latin American Airlines is basically dead even. I'm not even sure why that's in the green. And yeah, pretty much everything's down. I think the biggest gainer was 8% and this was, what is this guy? This one is Ellington Financial. So, all right, so let's go. But overall, I mean, everything's down today. It's just, it's one of those days, you know what? You get up, you get, you hit a double, a triple, and a single, and then the next time you get up, you strike out or ground out. It just happens. It's a day where you take a little bit of a hit, but um, I'm not really worried. The mark as a whole is down. It looks like every sector is down. Uh, the REITs are down, gas is down, airlines are down, cruises are down. Cruises are really down because they got excluded from the government bill because of all things, they are not, they are not, oops, let me mark that as red. Um, of all things, they are not um, headquartered in the United States, the cruise line. So they're not eligible for aid. So it's something they just have to deal with. Let's close my mail down. I forgot to do that. So long and story short, it's just a day. Everybody's selling a little bit. It's probably high frequency trading. Um, but I've had a streak, oh man, it's probably been two weeks. In fact, this is, I think, I'm pretty sure the only day where I'm taking a loss. But not all is lost. So last night, I was up really, really late at night. I was working hard yesterday. That's probably why I didn't have a video out yesterday. Um, and I, I thought, you know what? I've been looking at the same stocks for a while. I need to take a brand new, fresh look. So I'll show you what I did. I went to, oh, it's right over here. So I went to barchart.com and I basically put all exchanges, all the declines, and then I sorted them, and not just today, but I picked the last month. And what I did, I sorted them by percentage change so we can see really who's taken the biggest hit in the last month. And it's funny, if you look at this, let's see, one month, US exchange. I think the biggest gainer is 19%. Some people have up, up 9%. Oh, I'm sorry, I had the wrong one. That makes more sense. Yeah, so the biggest beneficiary in the last month was actually a loss. That tells you what this last month has been. So if you have an investor and somebody managing your investments and they tell you that they know something that's gonna gain money in any market, they're lying to you or they just don't know what they're talking about. But in here, we're gonna look at the change and we look at things that are negative 60, 60s, 58, 51, and these are actually higher before. Um, and so you look at that and it's like, all right, these are ones that I really want to look at. And so um, I actually went through every single one of these last night. And um, one of the things I looked at, and I'll just pull one off, off here. Let's see. Pick one that we looked at here. We'll go with this one. One of my favorite names, Diamondback Energy. And so... One of the things that I was looking at is I wanted to get a good sense on this. I mean, I could look at all the capitalization and volume and shares outstanding. Um, for the most part, the first thing I look for is this here. 
I wanted to get a, a really strong consensus on where people were at. So I saw this, 14 people had a strong buy, two people had a moderate buy, and four had a hold. So what I decided to do was go to Robinhood and look up Fang. Oop, and that would be Facebook. We're not doing that one. <clears throat> and then from there, I know that this one probably has some good recommendations. I looked at the analyst ratings here. It's 100%, 35 analysts, and they all rate it by. And that doesn't happen very often. So from there, I looked at the last, we'll start with five years. Pretty good chart. It's, it's growing a little bit, maybe a little flat overall. Last year, same thing, we go to three months, and I look for death day, that's February 20th, and it's priced at about 80 bucks per share, versus 23 right now. So one of the things I did for each one of these that I looked at, I'm like, all right, that's pretty good. I wanted to get a good numerical thing. So I ran an Excel chart where I took the stock name of all the ones that I looked at, the current price, that price at closing last night, the price as of, and it should say this here, we'll just reformat this. Let's say general, and I'll just say Feb 20. Um, and then right here is the ratio of upside. So 14.81 divided by 2.0 is 7.41. I basically ran these, I ranked them all, and then I sorted the rank. So the best upside is going to be on the top <clears throat> at seven and a half times the investment if I invested last night, all the way down to JetBlue, which was a loser. I picked the airlines um, because I figured they were getting bailout money. I'll take a look at that. But they were all JetBlue, American, United. They were all just circling the drain at that point. And AMC is the same thing. They tried to get bailout money, and they were not given bailout money. So maybe there's something else they're going to be doing. They are an American company, and most of their employees are American, so they are eligible for money potentially, but they were not included in the bill that passed last night. So anyway, what I did from there is I wanted to get a good sense on really strong stocks. Those are the ones that I just put in yellow. I don't really want to get too much into that. There's not really much to talk about. And then from there, anywhere and here where we would say, um, or I'm sorry, when I went to Robin Hood, where they said the percentage of ratings is 100%, I would go in here and note that down. And so ideally I want to invest in these top ones, but I'm looking at it based on the rate. I mean, 3.62 to 3.4 is not really all that much. These are the heavy winners that we're looking at. I want to make sure they had good ratings behind them. We had 64, 89, and 80. And then um, 100 right there and the ones that I thought were really strong ones that I wanted to consider investing in I put in red not really complicated here I just want to put in red um, now what's really cool and if you've been following these videos you'll know that these stocks have been performing really well is currently at the price that ER and EVRI two stocks that I currently own in my portfolio are still number three and four but I did not buy them at this. I bought them much, much lower. I bought this at $6, I believe. And that would make it number one on the list. And I bought this, I believe, at $2.50, which would make it number two on the list. So I know what I'm doing when, I, when I'm doing this. So here I just wanted to get a good sense on allocating a certain amount of money that I put toward each one. So last night I put $2,000 on this, $2,000 on SSL. And SSL is... It's Sassel Limited, and they do, oh, I have the wrong one here. Let's take a look here. Sometimes it's easier to use the Robin Hood on my phone, especially when I'm giving a presentation. So SSL, uh, they do liquid fuels, chemicals, and low carbon electricity, mining, electricity, and steam. And they're, they're all over the world, South Africa, Canada, Gabon, 
Anyway, they've been around since 1950. They have 30,000 employees. They're not going anywhere. They were going to get my first chunk of investing. CEQP is Crestwood Equity. And they do, and I saw this all over the place, midstream infrastructure. And what that means is when you, there's three types of levels, there's three types in the process of, of oil extraction. You have downstream, which is the actual pumping of the oil, midstream is the processing of it, and then upstream is the refining of it. So all these ones that were, when I was looking at these stocks, and they're not a lot of them included on here. I just saw so many of them last night that I'm not going to include the whole sector in here because it seemed like the whole sector was here, but I took the best ones that I saw here and I put it on here. So as of last night, it was selling for five. Uh, where it was February 20th it was 26.63. And it puts me number two. Now, keep in mind that oil prices are down. Part of it's due to Saudi Arabia just deciding to flood the market. And then part of it now is because everybody's sitting at home and they're not driving. So this one might take a little bit longer to, to make the money back, but the, the upside is just you can't ignore it. And then I have 89% of the analysts on Robinhood or who they use recommending it. So we threw $1,000 toward them. And then we have ERI, which is... What is that? E R I. I always forget that. It's, I want to. I don't want to butcher the name of it. El Dorado Resorts, which has been a big, big performer of mine so far. It's made 26% already, so I decided to throw some more money at that. I have a position. I had a position at six dollars. I decided to add some at 16 because again, on February 20th, it was still 70. So it's not about being greedy. I'm not going to say, well, I'm only going to keep the ones at six dollars. I'm willing to increase my overall average price paid but it's gonna make money because it's at 4%. And then I looked at WPX, which is, no, that's not it. WPX Energy, and they do exploration and production of oil and natural gas. So they're the downsides. They're the ones that actually dig out the oil from it. They're not midstream, they're downstream. Um, I was looking at that, I really like the 91%, but um, you know, once we're at a point where we're looking at this, it's all the, kind of the same ratio for the most part. So I thought 100%, not gonna argue with 100%. So there's this company, um, Venom. And Venom. is Viper Energy, great sign there, acquisition in, of oil and natural gas properties. They work in North America for the most part. It was founded in 2014 in Midland, Texas, which is the Permian Basin. So for me, it was like, I'm not really gonna turn that down. That, that company, that, that number seems really good and I'm not gonna ignore 100%. Um, 100 so I threw a little bit of money toward them. And there's also one that you're looking at. See if I have it down here. Fang, which is Diamondback Energy. I love the snakes. And Independent Oil and Gas Company. They do exploration, Permian Basin. So they're probably related to each other, I'm sure. Started in 07. And they were at 100%, but that ratio is low, so I'm not really not really ready to do that. I might do it later on. I thought I'll throw some money here and there at it. But basically I wanted to crystallize kind of how I was looking at it. So the good thing is um, the number three and four ones on my list I already own. And had I when I bought them, they would be number one on this list. So, but I decided to add number one and two. So I have the top one, two, three, and four on here um, that I wanted to add to the portfolio. And so that's exactly what we did. So we decided to add, I put in an order for Eldorado Resorts, and that one was, let's see, 59 shares at $16. Again, it was a little bit light day, so we took some pennies off today, but I'm not worried, the sucker's gonna bounce back. And then we have SSL, and we put an order in of that for a thousand shares at $1.95. And basically it's breaking even right now, but this is my baby. This is one I cannot wait to take a look at and see what that does in the future. Crestwood Equity. And 
we did an order basically 200 shares at five dollars a share that one's down a little bit today and this company does yeah oil and gas so when everything lifts off and people there's a higher demand for gas these people are going to pay off so i'm not worried about the little bit of a drop today darn i lost a dollar big deal so or a dollar off the price i'm not, not really too worried about that so overall we'll get back we're gonna make a lot of money off that one and then viper energy the same thing i went ahead and put in 100 percent can't really argue with that I'd be the only one arguing that if i did and i put 85 shares 667 it's down a little bit today but again this sucker is going to come back because it's oil and gas so we broke the streak today the first time there was actually a book loss on here but i'm not really too worried about it after hours trading if you look right here is still going up so we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, i am not in this for tomorrow i'm not in this for monday i'm not in this for next week this is a six to nine month this is the fiscal year calendar year 2020 to see where this is at but right now we're doing really well and overall we're booking out a 20 almost a 24 percent gain percentage on what we're investing so with that being said i will see you tomorrow